Hello. In this video, I'm going to go over a complete roadmap about how you can get started in cybersecurity with absolutely no experience. I did make a video like this a couple of years ago, but since then my opinions have changed on a lot of things. So I'll be including more resources to get you started that don't fall underneath certifications or degrees. The first step in starting in cybersecurity with no experience is you do need to know the basics of information technology. Within the tech field, there are two fields. There is software development and then there is IT. And I liken IT to more infrastructure and software development to more code. Although these two are merging, they're not completely yet merged. Some skills that fall under IT are networking. Do you know what the OSI model is? Do you know what DNS is, DHCP? Do you know what an IP address is? Security groups, firewall rules, things of that sort. The next is just the basics of operating systems. For instance, if you know the architecture of Windows machines and Linux machines, really useful. And also, do you know the basics of system administration? So maybe you're going to be configuring IP addresses, subnets, and gateways. Maybe you will be creating users in Active Directory, and that is part of identity access management. Maybe you'll be managing the servers or clusters or setting up like load balancers and things of that sort. You don't need to know coding unless you want to go in that direction. I personally prefer the infrastructure side, but you may prefer the more coding side. I used to recommend going through a course or certification. I just recently read a book called The Unschooled Mind, and basically one of the main concepts in that book is that a lot of what you learn in school and certifications actually does not transfer to the real world. And then it hit me. Now this is totally anecdotal advice, but honestly, the most of the learning that I've ever done in my career is actually just by doing it. For instance, I knew what, I knew the concept of what a bastion host was, but it wasn't until I actually felt the pain of setting one up that I really knew and felt what a bastion host was and could actually use that concept in a day-to-day -day basis to collect all of this information and go through all of these certifications to feel like you've done something. But the best way is just to start setting it up. For instance, in AWS, you could go and you could set up an entire network with virtual machines within 20 minutes. <laughs> you don't need any fancy hardware. You could just get started with Linux operating systems and Windows operating systems, along with creating a network and firewall rules. And then you know those concepts in your bone. And then people will know that you know them just by the depth of when you talk about them. This is going to be a lot more frustrating than it would be just to blindly learn facts. The second step is to learn the cybersecurity basics. Now I used to recommend getting a certificate I no longer recommend getting a certificate if you're trying to start in cybersecurity with no experience. Because again, it's so easy to get trapped into just collecting all of that data and never actually implementing the things that you're learning. I really wish I hadn't wasted so much time on degrees and certifications. That being said, the Security Plus syllabus does give you a really good baseline of the different things that you could learn. I'll show you right now. So if we look at the Security Plus syllabus, you're gonna notice like all of these concepts are really good to know. And you can use ChatGPT to help you figure out a, what a lot of these things mean. So secure network architecture cons. you can even try to set up a lot of these things in the cloud. For instance, in AWS, and it will literally give you step-by-step -step on how you could do this. And I say to do this because setting it up, you're going to get way more knowledge about different things than you would if you just did it in an isolated manner. And you're also going to learn about like VPCs, gateways. You're gonna learn about basically all of these things by setting up just one project. And then it also gives you context. So you are able to build upon that. Whereas if you just study all of these things and don't understand the context or how they interrelate to all of the other concepts, it's not, you're just like wasting time. And I wasted way too much time doing that. So as you can see, it's giving you a really good high level of how you can do all of this. 
You're going to learn about route tables from doing this, VPNs, gateways, firewall rules, and all of that sort. So for each section here, I would try just to set up a project. Uh, and it is a little bit overwhelming, and this isn't easy, but I would say it's the most effective way that you can learn. Now it's time just to build. And you know what? There are so many different open source projects that you could do. Let me go ahead and show you three really good open source projects you can get started with today. And let's go. All right, so here are some really cool projects you can start today for free. So the first one is Teapot, which is an all-in-one honey platform based on Elk. When doing this, also make sure to choose the right Linux distro, but basically it gives you the instructions on how to do it. And then once you have it set up, you're going to have a dashboard that looks like this. Really cool. So it gives you all of the information about the attackers hacking your honey pot. It's also very free and it even gives you an attack map right here of where those attackers are coming from. And then from there, you can create like detection playbooks. It also has cyber chef, so you can do some log analysis. I suggest doing it up in the cloud and not on your home network. The second one is Azure Go. If you're interested in setting up an entire infrastructure with a click of the button, super. You can set up a WAF. You can practice different modules and things of that and really get used to web application security along with the attack and the defense part of that. The third one that is really good by Red Canary and is open source is Atomic Red Team where you can emulate attacks from the command line and there are no installations required. So super cool and super powerful. Be careful when doing this within the cloud, different cloud providers have different rules on if you can do this in the cloud. Always check the policies before running these things in the cloud. And it's based on the MITRE attack framework, which is right here. And this is really good to know if you want to work on the blue team or the red team, because it does go into the mitigations on how you would mitigate these attacks and also how you would detect these types of attacks. So super good for getting hands-on experience with cybersecurity. Basics. The next part of your journey within cybersecurity is to actually gain skills in that specialization. Now that you've gone through various projects and things of that sort, you're going to want to figure out the specialization that you want to do. And there is plenty of them. Within cybersecurity, there are three main things. There are the technical side, the GRC side, and then there is also sales and marketing side. Each one of these can be extremely lucrative and rewarding, but you really have to find one that you like. For instance, for me personally, I don't like governance, risk, and compliance, and I have a physical repulsion against it. Some specializations within the technical side are the blue team and the red team. And the red team is the offensive, the blue team is the defensive, and I've mostly worked in the blue team, not so much the red team. There's much more jobs in the blue team, and the three main entry-level cybersecurity careers at this point in time are going to be a SOC analyst or security operations center analyst, a GRC analyst, or an information security analyst. Those three things are your three entry points into cyber security. And then after that, and then there's also the red team and the red team, you could be threat hunting, you could be social engineering people, you could be ethically hacking into different systems. Later on in your career is web application security. Incident response, you could just specialize in governance, risk, and compliance, become an auditor, and do engagements. You could become a chief information security officer, which I put underneath governance, risk, and compliance type of job. You could do digital forensics at, say, like a government agency. You could also work the federal area within the Department of Defense or the Threat Intelligence Agency. So you could work for the CIA and do, I guess, spy operations, which sounds super cool. You could work for the FBI, which is a great career in itself if you want to have that mix of law enforcement with cybersecurity 
along with you could work for the NSA. Alternatively, you could go and work for Google or you could work for Facebook or you could work for a small startup company. You could go overseas and work in different contracting jobs because there are companies that have offices all over the world. The possibilities are limitless. They're only growing. After you have chosen that, you really want to like gain skills in that specialization and become known for that one specialization. I say this because it'll make your job hunt so much easier. I actually don't really specialize in anything because I don't like to do the same job twice. Let me demonstrate. So for instance, I worked with the web application firewall for about, I don't know, about 18 months to two years, somewhere around there. And now I get recruiters contacting me for web application firewall systems. And it's because not many people know even really what a web application firewall is or how to operate it. And I was actually talking to my friend and they were implementing a WAF and they didn't do the proper procedure on when you're implementing a WAF and they stopped all of their traffic for a solid two hours until they could figure out what exactly a WAF did and why it stopped all of their traffic. That type of knowledge and that specialization gets recruiters reaching out to me and they're like desperate for me to go work for them. And these are jobs that pay fully remote $150,000 plus just for me to do the WAF. They know that I have those skills and they're extremely hard to find. By specializing, you make yourself a target for recruiters looking for that one specific skill. If you are in the medical field, you could also just learn about HIPAA and then you could apply your nursing or healthcare experience to say HIPAA and then build like one ultra learning project around GRC in the medical field and then show that to recruiters. Your job hunt will be 100 times easier. The next one is make sure that your resume accurately reflects your skills and abilities. Now presentation matters almost as much as your actual skills. I held myself back for a really long time because I didn't know how to market myself. I'm actually gonna show you a resume from years ago and go over everything that I did wrong with it. So <laughs> let's go look at it. All right, let's look at my resume from 2017. I'm gonna go over things that I did wrong with it. So at that time, I had about five years of experience. And I had a degree from Texas State University and I had a bunch of certificates. If you look at my job duties, my first big mistake was that I just listed what exactly I did. And I didn't really do my accomplishments. For instance, I had a lot of accomplishments when I was in the army, I didn't display them. I, I downplayed my skills a lot. I remember I had an interview with a recruiter at this time. She took a look at my resume and she was like, it looks like you're going for an entry level position. And at this point in time, I had five years of experience. She was like, this looks like an entry level resume. And here's the thing. I wasn't even a junior network administrator. I was just a network administrator. I like put the junior there for what reason? I have no idea. Also, my skills weren't really created for the job that I wanted, right? Like I just put down what I did on a day-to-day -day basis, but there's no real focus in what type of jobs I am aiming for. So there's desktop support, network administration, some server work, some customer service. So to me, this is basically preparing myself for the same type of job that I had in the last five years. This resume doesn't show that I have improved my skills at all or that I have moved up. At this point, I could have easily had made like six figures, but I didn't because I didn't have that confidence in my skills. I now get callbacks for executive level positions, but yeah, but that's because now I understand the power of focus and also that the way you display your accomplishments is almost as important, if not more important, than the skills that you have. So if your resume is bad, just remember this is a marketing document and that is the messaging that you're giving your employers who want to basically purchase your skill set. And after that, 
and you have your messaging right with your resume, then you want to create an online brand. Now, I wouldn't maybe not do this at the beginning because you're gonna have so many other things going on, like changing your career into cybersecurity, that it may just be overwhelming and you just may quit if you're trying to do anything and everything all at the same time. So LinkedIn is a really big platform for jobs, but so is Twitter. So you could start a Twitter. You could also start a YouTube channel. There's actually a lot of niches that have empty gaps on YouTube that I am able to pinpoint. When I first started doing this channel, the reason I started with career was because there was a really large gap. Now more and more people are doing it. So I'm like, I need to do something else. <laughs> You don't wanna be where the crowd is. A really big gap that I see is cybersecurity news. Now, if you can take and make cybersecurity news very interesting and engaging, you will definitely have success because there are people who just like to watch videos like myself and don't really like news outlet. For instance, I watch Graham Stephan whenever I want to be updated on the financial market. And I just watch his video and then I have a better idea of what's going on. I really wish something like that for cyber security because I would watch it and I don't really have time to start a cyber security news channel because it does take a lot of time and effort. For the ambitious, there is a idea. The next one is job hunting and negotiation. You really need to become clear on what type of company you want to work for. For instance, the job hunting for a private level job is going to be much different than if you want to work at the government level job. These require two different job hunting skill sets. It's going to require a different resume or AKA marketing document. And you're really going to want to optimize for your skill. For instance, on LinkedIn, you're going to want to make sure that you have all 50 skills. So you show up in search when recruiting are searching. So now I also need to update my LinkedIn, but I have a job. So, I become lazy. If I didn't have a job, I it would be on point. All right. You want people to add testimonials about you and how it was working with you. You want to showcase any like projects you've done. And then once you job hunt, you finally get a job offer. You're really going to want to negotiate that job offer. Don't ever accept the first one. I have helped people negotiate up to $20,000 on their initial offer. And that's an extra 2K a month, which is not a small amount. I've also myself negotiated $30,000 from an initial offer. So that's the type of money that you're looking at. Now, if it's your first job, maybe you'll have to take a little bit less, but if you have previous work experience, it's up to you to leverage that skill set for your next job. And just adding that one or two technical skills along with your previous skill set should really put you ahead of the majority of people. If you are interested, I have created a program to help you with all of these steps that I just mentioned called the Upskill to Cyber Academy. I don't take or accept everyone, but if you want help with learning the technical side, GRC, the defense side, how to negotiate, how to job hunt for different sectors in and negotiation and online branding, go ahead and apply. Even if you don't think that you're ready, I'll send you some really good free resources that can get you started so you can become ready. Again, that link is below in the description for Upskill to Cyber Academy, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.